Let's take a look at GCOB 7, uh, Worksheet 1. This is almost an identical objective to the previous objective B6, except in that case it's speaking about congruence of figures or shapes in general. Uh, this is specifically triangles. I wrote down the definition of what it means to have congruent triangles. It says two triangles are congruent if and only if a single or sequence of isometric transformations map one onto the other. So it's that idea again that we've learned that as we move these shapes the isometric nature locks them into a rigid form, uh, a congruent form. And all we have to do is take one and map it onto the other and we have congruence. So here are two triangles. If I wanted to establish that these were indeed congruent, uh, I might perform a reflection first. And then once I have that, translate it into position to land it on the other one. And if I can do that, because a reflection and a translation are isometric, and I placed it on top of the other one, I would have congruence. Let's take a look at some examples. Looking at these things up a little bit closer, uh, here's a nice example of where I can establish that two triangles are indeed congruent because I can map, using my reflection over the x-axis rule, map one onto the other. Here again, the nice translation would establish between these two triangles that they are indeed congruent because I can map one onto the other. This idea of congruence through mapping is a wonderful visual uh, clear kind of a, a representation and students just jump on it right away. Um, this says name the transformation or sequence of transformations that map one figure onto the other then complete the congruence statement. Now there are sometimes often more than one way to do this but uh, in this case it looks like they want us to do the reflection first. Um, let's think about this. Does it, uh, does it matter? It could be some simpler than others. If I reflect it down here, let me just show you. I'm not. I don't really like this as my first reflection, um, partly because I'm going to be. It looks like I'm. I would have to rotate it onto that spot. So I'm actually not going to reflect here. I'm going to reflect over the y-axis because I think you'll see that I, the uh, positioning is is much nicer. Uh, here it is right here. Here would be the reflection over the y-axis. And now it's a beautiful translation straight down by vector. So this is up one, it's got to go down, so down six, so zero and negative six. So if I reflect here and translate down right on top, and I would find that the A, so that would be A prime, would land on the D. The C would be uh, here, and so C would be the match with F. So then it would go B, e, E, F would be the way we would name that. Just one more example like this, same kind of idea. Um, let's see here. It looks like a rotation might be a good way to go. Um, I don't know. There's a couple of different options here. I definitely think I see a reflection is ne necessary. And actually, now that I look at it, I actually like the reflection over the x-axis first. Um, that would place my three points here. If I reflect, well, let's see what they told me to do. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. So I'm going to reflect over the x-axis this time first. And now you can see things are nice for a good slide into place. I'm at negative 2. got to go to 8. So that would be 10 to the right. And then I would land directly on it. Now, of course, this T would be here at T prime. H would be here at H prime. G would be here G. So the A is going to match up to our T, our C is matching with the H, and our B is matching with the G, just like this. A very nice definition of congruence and fairly easy to understand.